What's going on, y'all? Micah here, and I'm back with another boxing video. And as you can see, this is about the Naoya Inoue versus Stephen Fulton fight that just happened this morning. And also, as you can see, it didn't go in Stephen Fulton's favor. Unfortunately, I was rooting for Stephen Fulton. I don't have a problem with Naoya Inoue. I actually like the guy. He seems like a respectful little dude. He's, you know, he's got some good fighting skills under his belt. But I was going for Stephen Fulton, obviously. And uh, I would say that Stephen Fulton didn't fight to his full capabilities in this fight. I don't think that he really put up the same numbers of past fights that I've watched him in. I watched a few old fights, and, you know, he was a little more active. He never had power, as you can see, with his record and everything like that. I think he's only got, like, eight KOs out of 20-some-odd fights. So he's never had power. He's also always been more of a finesse footwork guy. But in this fight... You know, he did a little bit of the footwork, but he kind of stood in front of that. Oh, yeah, anyway, like just standing there, like super wide base where you can't really move. You're going to try to plant and, and throw some, some power bomb shots, but we know that's not his game. He wasn't throwing them, though. That's the thing. He wasn't throwing them. He barely backed up. Not yet, anyway, at all throughout the fight. Not yet, anyway, kept on throwing jabs to the body. There were some good stiff jabs to the body. I'll, I'll add too. And then. You know, this kept going on for about seven rounds. I'll say about round eight. Now, anyway, finally, you know, he got the cash in on that jab to the body. He had been setting him up long enough, and Stephen Fulton was ready for that right over the top. You know, that started, that stunned him, had him kind of like wobbling, not really knowing where he's at. He's out on his feet. Next thing you know, anyway, hits him with a leaping left hook that drops him. He gets up, he's dazed. Now he anyway goes in for the TKO. So yeah, it wasn't a good day for him. I think that uh, you know he could have definitely did a little bit more numbers. He could not. I mean, he could have just fought better. I, I applaud him for going out there and daring to be great. I would say, as far as him defending his belts out in Japan, I would say that was the, fir the first mistake. But I was talking to a few other people and they were saying that's like the only way he'll make the kind of money he made. Somebody was saying that thing he got about five mil off that fight, which is cool. That's awesome. But I think, uh, you know, it depends on, you know, what you're after in boxing. Do you want to be like the the guy who's got the money or do you want to be the guy who's got the belts? And I mean, most, most of us do want money. We, you know, we come we come from a place where, you know, we're trying to get some money and all that kind of stuff. But I guess, you know, you do want to have that. Uh, you want to be that guy at the same time. And you can't really be that guy at the same time without the belts. I, I think that regardless of where they fought, I think he would at least I think he would at least made a meal here here in the U.S., I think. But uh. You know, he went out there, he dared to be great, and uh, he, he fought on Lionel like, Inway's home turf, which is a to totally different thing. He's got nobody backing him. He's got no fans there at all. And if you watch the fight, the crowd was super quiet. So I think that if Naoya Inway was to come to the United States, I think it'd be a whole different thing. He's not going to be able to hear his instructions from his corner. It's just going to be a whole big cultural shock to him, unless he's already been here. I'm not sure. He's probably been around the world quite a few times, I hope. But, uh, yeah, man. Sucks for Stephen Fulton. I think that uh, a lot of us kind of underestimated Naoya anyway because he's an Asian dude. And I will say that, that uh, Asia does have somewhat of a boxing scene, low-key. If you watch this guy named Office Honcho editing, he, he kind of goes into detail about that. I think he's a Blasian dude. He talks about it. And it's, uh, it's actually kind of interesting. Like, you know, they be really out there doing some numbers, but it's not really televised because it's not in the United States. But uh, one thing, another thing that, that's really annoying me about this whole situation is how all these other races of people that aren't Asian, they're not Japanese, but they're, you know, they're uh, they're coming around here talking about, yeah, you black guys suck, yeah, how does it feel to get beat? And it's like, bro, why do, you, why do you guys have to go ahead and cling to these guys' victories? I can't stand that. Like, I, I had a white guy telling me the other day that, uh, he was an American white guy or something, too. He was telling me that, yeah, well, uh, Canelo Alvarez beat up some black fighters. Yeah. And, uh, and, uh, some other dudes, Tyson Fury beat up Deontay Wilder. Yeah. And, uh, the, the Russian dudes beat up uh, a few black guys. Well, they're, well, they're the best in boxing right now. They haven't beaten any black dudes, but they're, he's saying they're the best in boxing. But it's like, so Canelo's Mexican. You guys don't like Mexicans. You don't want to come across the border. You guys don't care about Russian people because you guys have some type of weird vendetta with Russia. And then uh, 
as far as Tyson Fury goes, you're not British. So, I mean, I guess, I don't know. I think uh, this is just a case of, you know, good old-fashioned boxing. Who could beat the black guy? If you could beat the black guy and he's a decent, solid black guy, you're going to get that credit, which now you're in way. It's going to get that credit. I don't have an issue with Naomi anyway. I think that he's a respectable dude, and he's got some good skills. Some things I will say that I saw on him that I didn't like is he keeps his hands very low. I think if anybody with an IQ or some power can take advantage of that, it would be curtains for him. Every time he goes to the attack, he starts to drop his hands. He does he does beginner mistakes once he goes on the, the attack. I saw him throw an uppercut, and both his hands went down from his face. So yeah, man. If we can get somebody in there that's you know that'll take him down and hit him with a you know hit him with some power or some some athleticism, I think it would be over for Naomi anyway. I I don't think that he's a hype train, but at the same time, well, I don't think that he's as good as people are saying he is. Like you know you've got these white guys on the internet like yeah he's the best fighter since Pacquiao. He's nowhere near Pacquiao's level. We're not gonna play like that. Pacquiao was a freak, bro. Pacquiao had speed. All that, bro. Yeah, he's nowhere near no goddamn Pacquiao, bro. Speed, power, everything, bro. There's, yeah, there's no way. But they're saying that now in way his team want to fight Tank Davis up next. How do you guys think that that fight would fare? I think that Tank Davis gets the job done. Tank Davis is, is athletic. Stephen Fulton is athletic, but Tank Davis is like full-on black guy athleticism. You've got finesse and power. Stephen Fulton is just more finesse. So I think that'll be a whole totally different thing. Also, Javante Davis is not going to be scared of Naomi Iwe like Stephen Fulton was scared of Naomi Iwe. I think he kind of let all the hype get to his head, and that's kind of what took him out of his game plan. He ended up losing the way he lost. I hate that he lost. Hopefully he recovers, and he does not let this, you know, ruin his career and whatnot. I look forward to seeing what Naoya Inway does do next. Though. I would like to see a tank versus Naoya Inway fight. That would be cool. Let me know what you guys thought about the fight down in the comments below. If you watched up to this point, thanks for watching. Have a great day, and I'll see y'all next time.